What is up everybody back with a new video here and with this one I'm going to be talking about my 20 favorite guitar players of all time. I've done uh, like a top 10 list on this two or three years ago but uh, I think my orders changed a little bit and I want to expand it to a top 20. Talk about all the guitar players that I really dig and again just my favorites here so there's going to be some guys that might be left off that you think should be there. That's cool. Put them in your list. Give them in the comments but uh, just going to run through my 20 favorites here. Hard rock and metal. But uh, it'll be mostly metal, of course. So starting off at number 20, I got Warren D. Martini, amazing guitar player, of course, from Rat. I think Rat is one of the better bands to come out of the 80s glam metal movement. Uh, they're basically just traditional metal, and they had some makeup, and they were a little bit poppy here and there. But, you know, they didn't really have any ballads. Uh, they had some pretty heavy stuff early on, Out of the Cellar. Uh, you know, Dancing Undercover, Invasion of Your Privacy, all those are fantastic albums, and Warren's tone is so amazing, some great solos, very melodic, uh, just that tone is so sharp and awesome, and some great opening riffs, like Lay It Down, one of the best opening riffs ever, and Out of the Cellar is actually my favorite debut album ever, so uh, Warren's got to make the list, he is freaking amazing. Number 19, a uh, bit of a change, I know several years ago, I would have actually had this guy as my number one, but uh, you know, I don't listen to him as much. I still greatly respect his abilities in guitar playing, but I got Ingve at number 19. You know, still an amazing guitarist, just has fallen a little bit for me. But uh, of course, like Rising Force, Marching Out, his first two solo albums are great. His album with the band Steelers, awesome. Like great early metal. Ron Keel on vocals on that one, pretty cool stuff. Uh, the Alcatraz album he's on is great. Uh, and, you know, some other stuff up into the 90s, like uh, uh, The Seventh Sign and Magnum Opus, some really great shredding, of course. Ingve mixes that neoclassical style with just, like, blistering, mind-blowing, like, speed shred, which is awesome. He's a great player, but he's here at number 19. Uh, that's still, you know, the 19th best guitar player ever. There's been thousands of guitar players to touch a guitar. 19's pretty good. But uh, number 18, I got Dimebag Daryl. Got the tattoo. Another guy that used to be in my top 10, and he's fallen a little bit, but... Uh, still love them. A lot of great stuff there, especially like Power Metal, Cowboys from Hell, and, uh, you know, the next two, probably uh, Vulgar Display of Power and Far Beyond Driven. Love those uh, four or five albums there. You know, I like all the Pantera stuff, even the uh, earlier stuff before Power Metal, I think is pretty cool. Uh, Dimebag, Diamond, Daryl is what he was called back then in the 80s, but he's a great player, amazing tone, really fast, awesome soloer, you know, like floods, really kind of melodic, uh, emotional solo, so he can slow it down, he can go, you know, the blistering speed, uh, you know, really versatile, good player, so number 18. Number 17, I got David T. Chastain, a guy that uh, I think is really underrated, was in a band called Chastain, of course, with his name there, but Mystery of Illusion, you know, The Ruler of the Wasteland, Seventh of Never, all those albums, the first, like, five. The Voice of the Cult title track is freaking amazing. He's got another band called CJSS from back in the day, some great shred. But uh, he's one of those guys, just very fast, kind of underrated shredder from the 80s that definitely deserves more recognition. Really cool player, great tone. Uh, David Ch uh, T. Chastain, number 17. Now, my number, I got a list set up over here. One second. My number 16, I got Andy LaRock from uh, the King Diamond Band. He's been on every single album. He was also on Individual Thought Patterns by Death. Really cool soloer. A lot of great riffs. Great tone on those King Diamond albums. Just love uh, pretty much all of the King Diamond albums. And Andy is a big part. Why? You know, Fatal Portrait, Abigail, Conspiracy, The Eye. These are all freaking awesome albums. The Spiders of Lullaby, all great. So... He's got to be on the list. Number 15, I got Akira Takasaki from Loudness. I've got a Loudness album up there, Thunder in the East, which is one of the best albums of all time. Uh, great solos, great riffs, great tone all over that. Uh, and then, you know, they've got like 26, 27 albums, so I can't go through all of them. But probably like my three favorites are that one, um, Soldier of Fortune, and maybe I'd say their self-titled album from 1992. The song Slaughterhouse, super heavy. Just very aggressive, hard-hitting riff. Just awesome tone as well. So definitely check that one out if you don't know it. Slaughterhouse, the Loudness self-titled album. And Akira, just fantastic player. Even up into the 2000s, a lot of good stuff with them. The Everlasting is really awesome. Uh, from 2009, an album I dig quite a bit from them. Uh, number 14, this one, uh, you know, I was debating in between two guys here because they're in the same band. They're kind of like a pair, but... I'm going to go Adrian Smith, slightly prefer him over Dave Murray. It could easily be him here as well, but he's definitely an honorable mention. But Adrian, always slightly preferred. Um, love, you know, all the Iron Maiden albums he's on from the second one, Killers, up through um, uh, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. Then he came back, of course, with Brave New World. 
But uh, yeah, great guitar player. Again, Dave is awesome as well. So either one of those guys could be here. Um, love them both. So Adrian, number 14. Number 13, I'm going to go with George Lynch. Uh, love him. Love Dokken. Dokken's my favorite uh, glam metal band there from the 80s. And, you know, George Lynch, great. Instantly recognizable guitar tone. His pinch harmonics are crazy and awesome. Uh, a lot of great solos on those first four Dokken albums before he left to form Lynch Mob. And then there's a bunch of great solos with Lynch Mob as well. But, uh, of course, Mr. Scary, the great instrumental song. You go to that could be like his staple song, I'd say, but a lot of good solos with him. Uh, Into the Fire, another one that stands out for me. Next up at number 12, I've got Tony Iommi, of course, from Black Sabbath. You know, the godfather of metal, a freaking riff god. So many awesome riffs with him. His tone is amazing. A couple of uh, underrated ones that I'd like to highlight and underrated solos. I got Devil and Daughter from Headless uh, Cross, 1989. The whole song is awesome, very underrated, but the solo is one of my favorite solos he's ever done. Just majestic, amazing stuff. And the song Lost Forever from uh, Eternal Idol, 1987, the first Tony Martin album. I think that opening riff is freaking amazing. His tone is so sharp there. Uh, and the riff is just great. But of course, all the classic ones from the 70s, the typical ones, they're all great. Uh, of course, all the uh, Dio albums and all the other stuff. Iomi is a legend. Great, great guitar player at number 12 for me. Number 11, I got Glenn Tipton. Uh, love them. Love Judas Priest. They're one of my like top five bands ever. Glenn, big reason for that. He's got some of my favorite solos ever, Beyond the Realms of Death. Uh, that solo is just majestic and amazing. Absolutely perfect. And uh, the solo like the main solo on painkiller is just uh ridiculous and awesome but he's got a lot of great ones those are just like two of my top favorites there though number 10 i got paul gilbert uh, the guy is a freaking wizard if you ever watch him play like the way he can move his pinky is just like inhuman and how fast and precise and awesome he can play is ridiculous specifically on the first two racer x albums street lethal and second heat and then, of course, Mr. Big was formed. Mr. Big's all right, uh, but then came back with Racer X, Technical Difficulties. The uh, solo on that title track is mind-blowing and just perfect. So Paul, fantastic player, number 10. Number 9, I got uh, Chris Oliva from Sabotage, RIP. He was an awesome player, but, uh, you know, him, uh, you know, the first seven Sabotage albums are all uh, amazing, but uh, a couple standouts for me. I'd probably say the song Hounds, which is just amazing from Gutter Ballet. The speed and intensity of that when it gets going is just ridiculous. And how amazing the tone is, is just uh, so awesome. And, you know, everything on Hall of the Mountain King, that's one of the best albums of all time. Uh, especially like 24 hours ago and the title track. So, so perfect. Uh, number eight, I've got Rob Cavastani from Death Angel. He's a guy I've talked about before as being like one of the best live players. I think Death, uh, Death Angel is like the best classic era thrash band going right now uh, from a live standpoint, like they play the best live. It's just ridiculous how perfect they are, how tight and just amazing everybody is playing, especially Rob. His tone is perfect. He hits every riff perfectly, every solo perfectly, especially the stuff from uh, like the Dream Calls for Blood, Caster of Shame and that title track. So awesome when they play that live. Uh, and you know, of course, the first three albums, Ultraviolence, Act 3, Frolic Through the Park, they're all awesome, but uh, Rob, great, great player that deserves more recognition, so he's getting it here. He's my number eight uh, all time. Number seven, I got Akio Shimizu, a really, really great player from Japan. He is with the band Anthem. He's been with them since uh, the early 90s. He was on their album, Domestic Booty. Venom Strike on that album is freaking amazing, and that album was actually produced by Chris Sangridis, the guy who produced Painkiller, so people call it like you know they call them the japanese Judas priest in general but people call that like painkiller too very aggressive heavy great guitar playing from akio then the band broke up but they've been back together since 2000 putting out just amazing album after amazing album really they're a band without a uh, weak album uh, eternal warrior immortal black empire some albums from the mid 2000s their newest one crimson and jet black is awesome like the, the soloing and riffs and tone on their new album that just came out a couple days ago so awesome. It's going to be one of my top albums of the year for sure. And Akio is just that good. His solos are so fast, precise, clean. The shred is majestic. Uh, the riffs, so heavy and awesome. Uh, number six, I got a mainly like a riff guy here, Dagon from Inquisition. His uh, riffs are just ridiculous. He just makes up so, such unique and awesome playing with his riffs. Everything from Into the Infernal Regions of the Ancient Cult, their debut from 1998. 
up through uh, Black Mass for a Mass Grave is awesome, but probably like Ominous Doctrines from 2010 has some of his best, like most unique and complex uh, guitar playing. Astral Path of Supreme Majesties, you can tell he's like layering the riffs and just the tone is so good and everything about that album is fantastic. Command of the Dark Crown, another one, just big chugging heavy riff and uh, love a lot of this guy's riffs and just uh, they're one of my favorite bands now and he is, you know, a big part of that with his riffing. So he is number six, great guitar player. Number five, I got Dave Mustaine from Megadeth. You know, so many great riffs and solos with him. Combined with his songwriting, he's put out like my favorite discography of all time. Obviously, Megadeth is my favorite band. So he's a great songwriter, uh, great guitar player, a couple of his standout solos. You know, that kind of outro solo on My Last Words from Peace Cells. Freaking amazing, very fast, very awesome, great tone. And of course, the Holy War solo is top notch as well, but he's got a lot of great ones. Kick the Chair, another one from more modern times that is fantastic. Uh, and just, I could go on, but he's he's awesome. Number four, I got Eddie Van Halen. Uh, Van Halen, one of the greatest hard rock bands of all time. Eddie, very in, you know innovative, influential player, changed the game with his uh, tapping and you know everything about his guitar playing is fantastic, great riffer as well, but uh, I think like Mean Street is one of my favorite moments, just how he's kind of tapping on the intro and then he transitions into that amazing riff. The Hot for Teacher uh, opening, you know, there with the soloing is awesome. Uh, his riffs can be very heavy at times. You know, some stuff on Van Halen 2 is very, very heavy and awesome. DOA uh, and a couple other songs on that album are heavy and awesome. But Eddie, you know, it's Eddie Van Halen. He's going to be high up on a lot of lists. Number three, I got Jeff Waters from Annihilator. The guy is a freaking shred machine. Uh, his soloing is so fast, precise, clean, just majestic a lot of times. Brings a tear to your eye almost. This stuff is so beautiful. He can be really melodic and like, uh, you know, that way as well. But he can also shred with the best of them. I'd say he's probably the best shredder in metal if we're going to go like pure shred. The guy is ridiculous, but everything, you know, I like a lot of their albums. They've got 17, and they are not a band that only has two good albums. Like some falsely claim with their first two albums, Alice in Hell and Never Neverland. They are, you know, probably the two best, but Refresh the Demon, Carnival Diablos, Waking the Fury, the self-titled album from uh, 2010, which has one of his best moments, the opening song, The Trend. There is a really cool playthrough he does of that on YouTube you can check out, which uh, is just ridiculous, mind-blowing stuff, so check that. And even their most recent album, Ballistic Sadistic, I thought was really good. Specifically, the song Lip Service is just majestic. Very awesome melodic playing from Jeff. Uh, my number two is going to be Ted Nugent. Always been a big uh, big fan of his. Uh, he's got everything I want. You know, the energy, the heavy riffs, the aggressive stuff. You know, everything about his playing is awesome. Love his solos. A lot of his 70s stuff, like gritty 70s hard rock style he does. Uh, even like with Damn Yankees, he did more of like a glammy 80s hard rock style with that. Some awesome solos on like Come Again, High Enough. Uh, and then, you know, back to the 70s, you got Stranglehold, which is one of the best rock songs ever. The opening riff, so iconic. That solo, absolutely majestic and perfect. And my number one, I got Marty Friedman. Just saw him again for the second time uh, a couple weeks back or a week or two back now. But uh, the guy is just amazing. He's got a great catalog. You know, his stuff with Megadeth is... Is freaking awesome. He's on my favorite album ever, and he's got a lot of great solos on that one. Rest in peace uh, from Tornado of Souls, which I've listed as the greatest solo ever. You know, that's just absolutely perfect from how it builds up into the climax. It's fast. It's freaking majestic. Uh, I saw him play it live the other day, and it was awesome. He freaking nailed it. Absolutely awesome. Uh, the Hangar 18 solos are great. So he's got a lot of great solo stuff, the cacophony stuff. Uh, the song like Concerto from uh, the first... Uh, cacophony album speed metal symphony is awesome uh, a lot of great stuff on that you know with jason becker uh, his first solo album dragon's kiss is great his album inferno is awesome uh, he's got slower stuff he's a very diverse player he's a guy that you know plays with a lot of emotion he draws you in he can keep your attention you know uh that's hard to do as being like a mainly instrumental player with your solo stuff but he does it uh, makes unique cool stuff i think and his tone is just freaking perfect for me. So that is my number one, Marty Friedman. Now, as I said, I got a couple honorables. Uh, so many guys uh, could be here. Tough to leave a lot of these off. I'll try not to run on for too long because I could list like 50 honorable mentions, but Chuck Schuldner was close. Reb Beach, uh, really great player. Uh, I'm looking through a bunch of guys here. Andy Klassen, I think, is a guy that deserves some recognition from 
uh, the early Holy Moses stuff. The guy is awesome, very technical player, and, uh, you know, fast thrashy player at times. Kika Larero, uh, current Megadeth guitar player, is fantastic. Uh, Gary Holt, Herman Lee, I think, is awesome from Dragon Force. John Sykes, uh, Mick Mars is a cool player. Vito Brada, uh, John Norum, um, of course, as I said, like Dave Murray, KK Downing, those two guys, like they could be like his pairs with Judas Priest and uh, uh, Iron Maiden, but you know, I had to pick just one of them, I think, but. Uh, they're both awesome as well, and uh, that's mainly what I've got for my honorable mentions. Of course, there's a lot of other great guys. Just even looking like in my background here, uh, friggin' the Merciful Fate guys, Denner and Sherman, great stuff. Uh, got some Halloween and or uh, fucking Kai Hansen. Those guys are great. Uh, Wasp, Chris Holmes, great, great guitar player, great tone. The Tesla guys are great. Frank Hannon, but uh, yeah, a lot of good guitar players. Y'all can let me know in the comments. I didn't get to everybody, but those were about my 20 favorites. And of course that list could fluctuate and move around a spot or two, depending on the day. Let me know what you thought. Give me your 20 in the comments. And until next time, thank y'all for watching.